Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, as we're getting ready for Rosh Hashanah, for the remembrance of the aspect of the shofar, and for the experience of the shofar itself, we're going to delve into a particular idea that we've spoken about in the past, and this is what is referred to as the fourfold song, the Shir Pashut Kaful Meshul Shemruba, the Shir that takes place, the song that unfolds from one stage into a doubled stage, into a tripled stage, and then finally into a fourfold stage, wherein the song takes on its full manifested power. Now, when it comes to this notion that Chazad described of the Shir Sheyis Ayr La'asid, the song that's going to be revealed in the future, what Rabbi Nachman describes is that this is not simply a song that will herald in redemption, meaning to say that this fourfold song will take shape as Mashiach arrives, but rather the unfolding process of the four stages of song is the very process in which redemption unfolds and arrives, both on an individual level as well as on a collective level. Now, when it comes to the collective level, when it comes to the hisairus of Geula that takes place through this progression, through the four stages of experience, we're going to leave aside for a moment, because when it comes to the macro level, we have less of a grasp in terms of what it means to engage it practically. But what we can utilize is to index the actual arrival of Mashiach by engaging with the practical revelation of redemption within the self. So by understanding the fourfold song within the self and the unfolding process within the self itself, we can also extrapolate and move from the particular to the general principle where we can understand how this will take shape in the collective redemption as well. There is an idea referred to as the Shir Pashut Kaful Meshulash Umaruba, a one-fold song, a second stage song, a three-fold song, and a four-fold song. Now, the Chiddush of this unfolding process, where it goes one to two to three to four, it's very important to understand how this mechanism of unfolding expression takes shape. Because B'derach Klal, we see things in a progressive state. We see A move to B, B move to C, C move to D, etc., etc. But level A contains its own work that must be done. And then once we've accomplished the work of level A, we move forward to level B and so on and so forth. We complete level B, we move to C, we complete C and we move to D. Generally speaking, when we speak of progressional growth, where one stage leads to another, when I engage in stage A and I finally graduate to reach stage B, I am no longer engaged with stage A. And so too, when I move to stage C, I've graduated stage B and A, and I no longer need to hold on to the energy, to the experience of those previous stages of A or B. And then finally, when I arrive at stage D, when I arrive at the final culmination of expression, I no longer have to hold on to A, B, or C because I finally arrived at D. Now, when it comes to Kedusha, However, we have to really reevaluate our conception of growth. We have to really reevaluate the conception of expansion, because unlike a movement from A to B to C to D, where A is one thing and then it's left aside for B, and then B is one thing and it's left aside for C, and then C is another thing and it's left aside for D, what we have is we have progressive growth. We have a perpetual expression of incremental growth, that there's A. And then once A has finally expressed itself, then A gives birth to B. But B does not take place without recalling the process that we've gone through in A, but rather we return back to A and then we take the renewed energy from A and move to B. And then once B is completed, we have to remove all of our expression, return back to A, engage A in a new way, uncover new light from within A, then engage in B in a new way, uncover new light within B in order to enable us to get to C so that it's A and then it's a return back to A in order to reach B and then it's A, B and then it's a return back to A to go to B and then to reach C. So it's A, A, B and then A, B, C. And then finally, when a person comes to the highest level, the level of D, it's not just that I forget C, B and A, but rather I return back to the original moment of the instant instantiation of power at A, I uncover more, and then I move towards B, and then I move towards C, each level revealing more of itself, so as to finally enable the incremental growth to reach its final culmination in the fourfold expression. So instead of thinking A to B to C to D, it's A, and then A, B, and then A, B, C, and then A, B, C, D. So this fourfold song is far different than four gradations of spiritual experience, but rather it is the tale of the unfolding process within 
when one experiences the incremental growth of adding a little bit more of that progressive growth until a person has finally built upon itself to reach the culmination. Now, this notion of the A, the AB, the ABC, the ABCD is expressed in accordance with the Arizal as taking place in the worlds that we experience. We live our lives in a four-staged process. We live in the construction of four worlds, four frameworks through which we perceive reality. We live in the world of Asiya, which is the beginning process. We live in the world of Yetzirah, which is then developing the action into a state of emotion. We live in the world of Bria, which is taking the state of action, then allowing it to move through a state of emotion in order to come to a place of contemplation. And then we live in the world of Atsilas, which is action, emotion, contemplation, and unity. So Badara Klal, we see each level not only as a standalone experience, but rather as something that is being built upon itself incrementally. So the first song, the singular song is going to be the first expression of self, where I move a little bit forward. I uncover a little bit more within myself. And then naturally, instead of the desire to move forward, I retreat backwards, retreat backwards in order to realize that the experience I previously just had, I can mine for more energy. And I return back to myself, running back inwards in order to unfold even more exponentially. And then again, I make that same gesture of the tzimtzum back inwards, even further down to allow for a further expression that's to come after that secondary tzimtzum. And I do this with each level perpetually retrieving back to the original place in order to unfold more and more because this is the process in which spiritual development and the development of self takes place there is the emergence of self incrementally a self is not revealed fully it needs to encounter prevention retrieve back retreat back into itself in order to learn how to overcome that prevention then move forward encounter another prevention return back inwards in order to experience more cultivation of spiritual energy to move even further until I finally arrive at that final place where I have now carried all of the previous stages of experience with me into the promised land. So it's not that I forget the previous stages and the previous effort when I arrive at the place of completion, but rather completion makes room and it holds on to and it validates and it elevates and it reveals the inherent power that was within all of the previous stages. What this does for us on a practical level is that if it took me four stages to finally arrive at that final destination so that and when I look back on all of the effort that was in stage one, stage two, and stage three, the levels of A, A, B, A, B, C, prior to arriving at A, B, C, D, so then my mindset would be, okay, those are insignificant. I don't have to value the effort I put into those, all of the struggles, all of the falls, all of the difficulty that it took for me to get to where I am right now. I can throw those aside as if they were secondary and insignificant to the process that I've arrived at now. But when we understand the secret of unity and the incremental growth that takes each and every level into consideration consideration, which includes the retreat back into the self in order to uncover more power so that I can surge forward even more intensely. So now A, A, B, A, B, C, all of those previous levels that seemingly appear to be insignificant in the place of finalization or arrival are included in the simcha, because without A or without A, B or without A, B, C, there's no possible way I would have ever arrived at A, B, C, D. Without the sheer pashat, kafal, meshulash, there's no way that I would have arrived at the sheer so this secret of the fourfold song of the one, the one, two, the one, two, three, the one, two, three, four, this incremental growth, the secret is that we retrieve all of the earlier levels, helping us understand that anything that seems has as if it were insignificant in our spiritual process, because I haven't yet arrived at the desired destination and those were more immature stages, instead of, God forbid, thinking that those are secondary and insignificant, they are included within the unity, which now ennobles the, new, the unity and it allows the unified process to become more intense and more powerful because now I have all of those previous stages within me as well. On a practical level, a sheer pashut, a simple song, the sheer pashat is when a person emerges out of themselves with the hopes of finding some newfound ground to stand upon. But then suddenly, after that initial burst of inspiration, uh, of inspiration and movement forward, a person encounters a mania, a person encounters some sort of prevention, some sort of pushback against that centrifugal force of the self, which forces the self, if it's honest with itself, to return and re retreat back into its innermost calmness. And then 
instead of losing hope and saying, oh, my first initial expression wasn't strong enough, I gather, I cultivate, I engage, I invest within myself so as to move even more slightly forward. But again, even after the second stage where I have moved ever so slightly forward away from A and now I have A, B, I still encounter a mania because that's what happens in this world. A person encounters manios and preventions on each and every level that they find themselves. So I have to retrieve even back, further back into the past to retrieve more inspiration to return back to that place of of the incubator of growth and then i move even so slightly forward the incremental growth allows me to value each and every step that is a little bit further than where i previously was i learned it once and now i learn it twice and then i go back to once and now i learn it three times etc cetera, etc cetera. and then finally when a person finally arrives at the culmination of their experience where they feel that they arrived to where they finally need to arrive the fourfold song the fullness of the song and the full expression of the self in contact with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the world and other people, at that point I feel the fullness, but the fullness is now not simply it's the fourth level, but it's the fourth level that is saturated with the intensity of all of the previous incremental stages of growth and the running and the returning and the feelings of inability and the feelings of the need to retreat. All of those spiritual expressions are not wasted, God forbid, but rather they are included within the spiritual process itself. This is the secret of the fourfold song, the Shir Pashat Kafal Meshul Shumaruba the one-fold song, the doubled song, the three-fold song, and the four-fold song. Now, the Ezra Sashem, we find something incredible. Because when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, when it comes to the Zman of what it means to renew a year, in truth, like we've spoken about already, we are at the death of the year. We are at the point where the year has expired its energy, and it leads us into a place of avoided state. The vitality, the highest of the world, is done. There's not enough in order to allow the year to perpetuate itself, and we need to return back to the beginning in order to uncover that deep, infinite strength that rests in the stage of potential prior to actualization. So on Rosh Hashanah, what we're doing is we're returning back to the place prior to the emergence of change, back to that place of simplicity, like the Kol Pashat of the Shofar, which allows me to be in a stage of Ebor, to be in a state of pure potential prior to expression. And this Zman of Rosh Hashanah, as the Tzamach Tzedek says, as all of the Tzaddik can point out, this is why Rosh Hashanah is Bekesa Liyom Chagenu. Rosh Hashanah is not a time of excitement or spiritual intensity, but rather it's a time of minimization of my spiritual capacity. It's a Zman of Dormita. It's a Zman of unconsciousness. It's a place where my natural and typical strengths of spirituality are not activated, and I find myself in a stage of unconsciousness. And it's specifically there, like we said in the name of Rosh Hashanah, Me Rosh Hashanah Nirali, which is the secret of Rosh Hashanah, where a person comes to find the unbearable light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But it's specifically within that low place. It's specifically Zayom Tchilas Ma'asecha. This is the beginning of Oilam Ha'asiya. This is the beginning of concealment. Or Bekesel Yom Chagenu, the Zman of Kisoy. Om Hayom Haras Olam. This is the day of the impregnation of existence. Zapt Tzemach Tzedek. He'elam is Melashan Oilam, and Oilam is Melashan He'elam, which means to say that Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of concealment, which means that the entire perspective that a person has on Rosh Hashanah is this willingness to move forward, but to realize the fundamental reality of retreating backwards. But the retreat backwards is not a negation on that movement forward with hope, but rather it is a doubled expression of the vitality and the unwillingness I have to give up any inch of spiritual growth. I include within it every stage, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. As Rabbi Nachman says, this is the ore of Tainus. Tainus is every moment that I fast, I have to return back to that original moment and fast another moment. And then I return back to the next moment and I fast for a third moment, which means that every Zman of Tainus becomes more intense because I am collecting now all of the previous moments. So too, it's true in Avoid the Sashem, every time I return back to myself into the inner states of myself, in the pure state of potential, I uncover an untapped reservoir of infinitude that rests within me. I am Moisif Vahoylech, as we're going to see in Hanukkah as well, in accordance with Beis Hillel. Now, this Indian of the Shir Pashat, Kafal, Meshul, Hashem, Ruba, is the Hisairus of Geula. It's the Shir Sheyis Ar Asid. Because right now, when we find ourselves in a stage of exile, we find ourselves perhaps at the first extension of self, and then this first retrieval, and then the first return back into self, and then the second extension of self, and then the second removal back inwards. And we are consistently trying to push the boundaries of our spiritual capacity, to push ourselves ever so slightly forward beyond what we conceive to be our self-contained and self 
of limitations and self-limited beliefs in order to push it ever so slightly forward where we can show ourselves over and over. We could be moist and nefesh a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But in the Zaman of Geula, when there's going to be the sheer meruba, the fourfold song, we're going to find the fullness, the 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 quad, the quad nature of reality's extension. One, two, three, four, like the four letters of the Shem Havaya, which is going to represent the full expression of the human being's capacity from within the limitations of this worldliness, where it was not a forgetfulness of the previous stages of small-mindedness, but rather an inclusion of those previous stages of small-mindedness with the revelation that each and every stage and moment of small-mindedness was fundamental and necessary within the building blocks of spirituality, reminding us to always take every act of our spiritual experience seriously, never to belittle, never to negate the value of even the slightest gesture in Avodah Hashem. Now, we find something radical. There's a radical notion that the tzaddik Rav Yitzhak Mayim Morger in Stern Shlita says over in the name of the Tairus Chacham based on a strange notion that comes about in the Kavanos of the Arizal when it comes to Biyado Afkiruchi by Kriya Shema Alamita. We find something incredible because until now what we've been talking about is that this single song, doubled song, threefold song and fourfold song is a process of moving from small expressions of spiritual growth towards the fullness of spiritual growth. So we would expect that as these four levels unfold, that each and every increment level where that increment is added, that now A is one thing, but AB is going to be higher than A, and ABC is going to be higher than AB, and ABCD is going to be higher than ABC. But what the Ariza points out, and the Taurus Chacham has a Heilige Heilige Ha'ar on this, and the Rebbe makes a huge Asak out of this Nakuda, is that really this fourfold song, why is it that all of reality can be composed into a fourfold extension of itself? It's because the ground of being, the source of being, the saturating light of being, and the inner light of being is ultimately the Shem Havaya, the Yud K, the Vav, and the K. The Yud, which represents Chachma Kaduma, it represents the burst of insight that first and foremost comes from the Kutza Shal Yud, the first insight of pleasure rooted in desire and desire rooted in pleasure, which then unfolds into the He, which is Bina, which is understanding, and from there it goes into the Midos, which are the Zer Anpin of Chesed, Gvur, Tveras, Netzachoid, and Yesoid, and then it goes into Malchus. So we see that there's the Yud, there's the Yud Hey, and there's the Yud Hey Vav, and then there's the Yud Hey Vav Hey. And we would expect the Yud Hey Vav Hey, obviously, to be the fullest extension of what can be found in this reality, and that's the ideal. But what we find is that the Arizal points out something profound that when looking at this fourfold unfolding process of spiritual development, these four stages also align to the four worlds of experience. And what the Arizal brings to us is somewhat of a reversed conception of things, because we would expect that the lowest level is just the Yud, and that that Yud would be the world of Asiya, and then the Yud Hey would be Asiya and Yitzira, and then the Yud Hey Vav would be Asiya, Yitzira, and Bria, and then the Yud Hey Vav Hey would be Asiya, Yitzira, Bria, or Atsilus. In language of psychology, we would assume that the Yud represents my willingness to be active. The Yud Hey represents my willingness to engage in action with some development of emotional, spiritual connection, which then leads to the Yud Kei Vav, which would be the entrance into the world of Bria, in addition to Asiya and Yitzira, which would then be action with some emotional content within it, rooted in a contemplation of divine unity, and then finally arriving at the full culmination of fullness, which is the fourfold song, it's the action that is imbibed with the emotional strength of the hay, which then enters into the place of emotionality, of, of hisbininus, of the vav, and then to the final extension of spiritual unity with the hay. But we find the very opposite. What the Arisa points out is that the osiyud, which is simply the first stage, the first expression of self, that represents the world of Atsilus. That represents the highest level of what we can possibly grasp. Then when I return back to the Yud and then extend forward to the Yud, hey, that's now Atsilus and Bria. And then and then when I enter in to Yud K Vav, that's Atsilus, Bria, and Yitzira. And then finally, when I enter into the Yud K Vav K, the fourfold song, that's when I finally have an extension into the world of Asiya. So what we find is that the fullness of Hashem's name, the fullness of the fourfold song expresses itself not in accessing the loftiest realms of Olam HaTzias, but rather it 
expresses itself specifically in our capacity to express ourselves in the world of Asiya, which is Olam Hafuch Ra'isi, that specifically the lowest world and the expression of godliness in the lowest world is going to be where we find the fullest expression of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name, while the first stage of the Yud, which is the lowest level of expression, is going to be associated with Olam Ha'atzilus. It's an Olam Hafuch Ra'isi, Elyonim Lamata V'Tachlonim Lamata, that which is above is below. The world of Atzilus seems to be associated with the first stage of the extension of the Yud, while the world of Asiya, which is the lowest world, seems to be associated with the full expression of the Yud Kei Vav Kei. And the Torah's Chacham points this out. And the Torah's Chacham asks the question of how could it be? How could it be that the fullness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name is expressed specifically when we gain access to the lowest world? It should be the opposite, that the fullness of expression brings us to the highest world. And what the Rebbe adds in order to make this question even starker is the fact that when you look at the Kedusha of the Shem Havaya, there are many Meforshim who say that if you write Yud, Yud Kei, or Yud Kei Vav, that's not Nechshav as Kedusha Sashem, meaning those levels don't even represent a fundamental expression of holiness that is rooted in a halachic framework of this name representing the Shema Etzem. Yes, Yud is a powerful letter. Yes, Yud K in of itself is a name of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. But if I'm writing the Shem Havaya and I only write the Yud, the Yud K or the Yud K Vav, there are Meforshim who say that there's no Kedusha Sashem there. So that just adds to the question, how could it be that the full Kedusha of the Shem Havaya, the full extension of the self in all four areas of action emotions, contemplation, and unity, how could it be that that only extends itself and only takes on any element of Kedusha, specifically when it extends itself into the lowest place imaginable? And what the Torah's Chacham responds and what the Rebbe builds this entire framework upon and what Rabbi Nachman is building upon as well in the secret of the Tikkun Klali, which is also referred to as the Shir Pashut Kafel Meshul Shemeruba because it's the Asara Mene Nagina and 10 is the unfolding of 1, 2, 3, and 4 because 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, which the Gra points out, all numbers are contained in 10, which means all numbers are contained in the first four stages of unfolding, 1, 2, 3, 4, which equals 10 as well. And how could it be that it's fully expressed finally in the world of Asiya? What the Torah's Chacham says is he brings a statement from Chazal which says, In the secret of Beroiv Amahadris Melech. The reason that we find the fullest extension of Akadosh Baruch Hu's name and the Achdus of Akadosh Baruch Hu and the Hiskashis of Eilam Asiya and Yitzir and Yitzir and Bria and Bria and Atzilus, which is drawing the actions into emotions and the emotions into contemplation and contemplation into unity, is because the more we unfold the light of the Rabbanu Shleilam and the more multiplicity that the light of Rabbanu is able to extend itself into the bigger chiddush that comes about. It's one thing to find Hakadosh Baruch Hu only in the world of Atzilus. It's another thing to find Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the world of Atzilus and Bria, because I can find Hakadosh Baruch Hu in my mind, in my desire, in my unity. It's even another thing to find Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the world of emotions, where I can regulate and I can try and overcome the cognitive distortions that affect my emotional discrepancies. But to find the Rebbeinu Shlaim in the world of Asiya, to find the Rebbeinu Shlaim in the world of Ha'elam, to find the Rebbeinu Shlaim in the world of concealment, in a world of Bekesli Yom Chagin, in a world of tachlis ha'elem of the hastar shabatoich hastara of the seif of the year, that is the chiddush. The chiddush is that we can be megalazayin and akadosh baruch hu specifically where it appears to be farthest from ourselves, and that is the secret of the shir pashut kafel meshulashim ruba. That it's specifically in your encounter with the preventions and your willingness to self sacrifice to overcome that prevention and return backwards to gain more strength to overcome more preventions until a person comes in contact with the starkest prevention that there is olam ha'asiya that there's no dear to find HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch HaKashem nearly, to find HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the boredom of it all, in the pain of it all, in the silence of it all, in the tiredness of it all, in the exhaustion, the excitement of it all, that's the biggest Chiddush. It's specifically when HaKadosh Baruch Hu expresses himself in the Dir B'tach Mamish, in the Olam HaAsiya, in the Hastara Shabbatoycha Hastara, in the end of all things, in that slight, tiny feeling that is Yisoyer in a person's heart when they hear the Shoifar, that is where a person is going to find HaKadosh Kaddish Baruch Hu, not in the places of spiritual ecstasy, not in the places of spiritual transcendence, but specifically in that unfolding process of the human being's perpetual process of returning and running and returning and running and mati v'loi mati and touching and not touching at once. Now this secret of the fourfold song is very much connected to the avoida of Shofar and it's connected to the avoida of Rosh Hashanah B'davka because Rosh Hashanah, like we said, is a time where a person becomes a katnish of a katnish, where a person comes to a place where there's nothing left, a person comes to a place where there's no more highest left, there's no more his there's nothing 
I can lay my confidence on. And at this point, all I can do is to come to the Rabbani Shalom, like a person who's just begging to be remembered, to become Yelet Sha'ashuim, who realizes Rabbani Shalom, I have nothing to show you, I have nothing to give you, I have nothing to offer you other than the Hakara that I have nothing. And when I recognize that I have nothing and that everything is from you, it's at that point in all of our humanity that a Kaddish Baruch who opens up his eyes to us and allows us to see ourselves properly, to find that within the stuckness, within the or of Chana, within that light of Chana, where she had the Pekida on Rosh Hashanah, within that or of crying out to the Rabbani Shleilam like a lunatic, and not being embarrassed to cry out to the Rabbani Shleilam like a lunatic, to be in that place of Yosef HaTzadik, who's Yoytze Mebesa Asurman Rosh Hashanah, to be like the Tzadik who has nothing left, I'm leaving jail today. It's not that I've prepared, I haven't prepared anything, I'm not ready for the Yom Nuraim. I'm in the Olam HaAsiyah, I'm leaving jail. But it's specifically in that place where a person is leaving the Beis HaAsurim of their lives, where I consistently push myself forward, and I come to understand the secret of Hashem, you want me down here specifically, because when I am Mamluch you on myself in the Hastara, Shabbatoich Hastara, in the darkness that's doubled over, in that place of Meirach HaKashem Nirali, in that place of Tachlis HaHe'elem, of Hayom Haras Oilam, in that place of He'elem HaAtzmi, in that place of not being able to grasp anything whatsoever, not this year, not the last year, not the year after, not all of the previous years, where the Ziyeyush of a certain level of this year is not going to be any different. It's specifically there that a person has the capacity of being Mamluch HaKadosh Baruch Hu and all of the Yeyush and all of their distance and all of their struggle. And this is the Or of the Shoifer. This is why the Shoifer comes about. It comes out from that place of the desire. Hashem, I'm in such a constricted state that the only thing that I can possibly ask you is to tear all of the concealment aside under. Do not give me strength to face the concealment anymore. It's not enough. I need you to tear the satan apart. Kra satan. I need you to break it apart. I need it to be destroyed. Have a battle ka'afra the afra. You want me to serve your Rabbana Shalom? Then give me you. Give me your ha'ara. Give me your giloi. Give me the hirayon, that pregnancy of the ability to cultivate a mindful connection to you, Rabbana Shalom. It's specifically in this place, mi mamakim krasicha Hashem. Someone who's tekeya babor. It's specifically when I find myself in the bore. When I find myself in that empty pit of self, in that empty pit of not having that strength to move forward. It's specifically there where it's Harim Kailacha Keshoifar, where my voice cries out like a shoifar. And Rabbi Nachman says something incredible. Rabbi Nachman says in Tiku Taichacha, Vizehu Harim Keshoifar Kailacha, like the Pasuk says, raise your voice like a shofar, cry out to the Rabbani Shlalem like a shoifar. Ka shoifar is osios, chof, shin, peiresh, daika, why? Kizeha koil hamashke asagan. It is specifically this voice that operates like the shofar, that is the ability of irrigating the garden, the garden that lays fallow, the garden that has no more growth, that garden that has been twisted and covered over by itself. It's specifically that Gan where we transform that place of Gehenim into Gan Eden. We have to learn how to irrigate that Gan and to allow it to grow with Maim Amukim Eitzos Blevish, the Maim of the Tzadikim Al Yoinim. It's specifically the Shoifar, the Bechinas Venahar Yoitzim Eden. The Nahar is that voice that comes out of Gan Eden, Lahashko Yisasagan. What is that Nahar who Bechinas Koy it's the song of that cry. It's the song of that song. Which nigun is the shoifar? It's the nigun of the shir sheis ayr la'asid. It's the revelation of the song that's going to be revealed in the future when all of the moments of disintegration are shown to simply be preparations for further integration. Because like we said, every mania serves as the opportunity to return back into myself, to uncover more strength and more wisdom to overcome that mania. And I am perpetually growing out of my struggles. I'm not giving up and returning. I am returning in order to find newfound strengths so that the fourfold song brings with it all of the strength and all of the content and all the survival of the previous stages. And this secret of the Shir Shei Yisar La'asid, when a Kaddish Baruch allows us to redeem our worlds and a Kaddish Baruch who redeems his world and all of the concealment, the Oilam is transformed into a place of revelation, that secret of one, one, two, it's revelation that meets concealment and then it's a return back to that place prior to concealment in order to bridge that gap and to move forward into further revelation and then concealment and then a further revelation, that's the secret of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being Mechadesh as Oilam, Hayoim Haras Oilam, to renew our world, Shu Bechina Shir Pashut, the first expression, Shir Kaful, the doubled expression, Shir Meshulash, the triple expression, Vishir Meruba, the fourfold expression, Yud, Yud Ke, Yud Ke Vav, Yud Ke Vav Ke, Vizek Kishoifar, this is what it means, Kishoifar Kolecha, Chof, Shin, Peiresh, Roi Sheteva, says Rabbi Nachman, Pashut, Kaful, Shalush, Viribua, that the secret of the Shoifar itself is this secret of the single song, 
song, the doubled song, the threefold song, and the fourfold song, encountering spiritual growth, encountering prevention, returning back, but without yeyush, but rather hope, to uncover more power within ourselves, to build incrementally upon each and every aspect of ourselves. Shubachinas hashir la'asid, when we can uncover this secret, that's the shear of la'asid, because what's the shear of la'asid? La'asid is not going to be finally you've arrived at the future, now you can forget about the past. God forbid, the tachlis of everything is to reach the future so that we can then retrieve back that which happened in the past and we can retroactively understand that everything that I'm experiencing now in the future was available to me in the past and that's Yom HaZikaron that's the time of memory where I can remember the future even prior to its arrival each and every aspect of expression Yud is a taste of Olam Haba, Yud K, a taste of Olam Haba, Yud K Vav, a taste of Olam Haba, and Yud K Vav K, a taste of Olam Haba. Every ounce of spiritual expression, every ounce of desire, nothing is lost. No positive expression of self, no expression of self is ever lost. Rosh Hashanah, as we're going to discuss tomorrow, but as Rosh Hashem is a day of the irreducible trace that gets built upon from year after year after year. Rav Hutner, Slusio in in, in, in Maimer Chaf, in Pachad Yitzchak Rosh Hashanah about Yosef, who's leaving Beis Asurim, and the Koyach of the Shofar is is theoretically based exactly on this teaching of Rabbi Nachman of the Shir Pashat Kafel Meshulah Shirumba and the ability, the radical ability to draw all of the struggle and all of the darkness and all of the pain that we experience prior to the arrival into the joy of the arrival. And as the Rebbe continues to teach over and over, this is Magdil the Or because it's one thing to reach the Malchus of a Kadosh Baruch Hu when I walk straight in and everything is easy. I don't think about it, I don't do anything, and then Salam, I hear a Kaddish Baruch Hu's voice, I hear the shofar, and shoin genik, that's everything, but a person who carries the burdens and the struggles of every yud, and every yud ke, and every yud ke vav, and all of the gloves that laid them down, or cut them till they cried out in their English and their shame, at that moment, we get to reveal the tachlis of all tachlisim that every ounce of my experience is mokusha to the Rabbi Nishleilam. And the more we can inculcate this knowledge into our minds prior to the arrival of this revelation in our eyes, the better we can taste the light of Geula prior to the arrival of Geula, which is the secret of the shoifer of Mashiach Tzikenu. It's the ability to live Olam Haba in Olam Haza, the a willingness to be like the Chacham, Haroya Asanoila, to see even though I'm only at the shame Yud right now and I'm encountering preventions, this little yud is going to be a yud k, and then it's going to become a yud k vav, and then it's going to be a yud k vav k. And this is the secret of the tikkun klali, which is based on the very same principles because it's about starting again over and over and over and over again, renewing hope, renewing hope, renewing hope, renewing hope, and allowing the hopelessness that stands as the separation between the first stage of hope and the second stage of hope to not serve as an interruption to those stages of hope, but rather to transform the hopelessness and the darkness itself into a ma'avar, into a bridge, into a geshert sar ma'oid ma'oid because when I realize I'm on that ma'avar and I realize I'm on that gesher tsar ma'oid ma'oid and if I can come to a place of not being afraid because I realize that this feeling of distance is not going to last forever because the only thing real is the feeling of his kashrus then mamela all of those moments of difficulty are going to be transformed into light and unbearable light of Rosh Hashanah of Rosh Hashinoi of his kashrus amitis to the sheer pashat kafal meshul ruba to the tainu amiti the tainu ka'ne'elam that can't be felt because of its infinite level and it can help us understand that even when we come to the final hey, that final yud k vav k, that's only the expression of one level, and then it leads us to the next havaya, and then the next havaya, and the next havaya. Ad ein sof be'ezras Hashem.